third situations, and I've done videos on them just to prove the the actual strength and and capabilities of the pro or the whole system. But um, you got to keep in mind that these things were de designed for a car. Uh, they were designed in, in 48 volt module or configurations in the car and designed to take what is it 280 volts of supercharge at those supercharge stations. They were also designed to be uh, take a four door sedan from zero to 60 in under four seconds. There's absolutely no way that I could put that kind of stress on these mo modules through you know this system of mine. Or even if you had a 48 volt system, you'd be really really hard pressed to uh, pump 280 volts into it. Or, you know, discharge, whatever. I don't even know the numbers on that one. But Nissan gives these uh, battery modules a lifespan of 10 years. You know, when you take them out of the car after it was wrecked or totaled or whatever, um, five years into that 10 years, you don't have five years left. You have like 30 or 40. Nobody really knows any of that because there's nobody out there that's got 30 years of experience with a battle-born lithium-ion battery. They do math and, and crunch some numbers, but nobody really knows for sure. I've said that before. Uh, so that's kind of an unknown, but they're one sixth the price as brand new lithium. They weigh one third as much. They take up the physical footprint of uh, one quarter of the physical footprint of any other comparable capacity lithium ion. They're more powerful because they were designed for a car. They're easier to use because they all are so small and light. And these bus bars you can buy from the same company. I mean, that, that's plug and play, in my opinion. You don't even have to, like, crimp lugs on them or anything. It's, it's already ready to go. Uh, and as far as lifespan, and, and I've kind of touched into that, but, you know, cycles of this and cycle numbers, we're only just figuring out what, what the actual capabilities of these things are. And the confidence that I now have 10 months later and nothing has even faltered or I haven't lost any sort of state of charge or anything, it's still the exact same. Uh, just solidifies that. I mean, it's a win-win-win-win situation for everybody. Um, the company that reclaims these things has a warehouse full of them, which brings me to another point. There will never be a shortage of supply with these things. The Nissan Leaf has now been the world's, not just us, the world's number one selling electric vehicle for over a decade now. There's either 36 or 48 of these. Everything after 2012 or 13, I believe, has 48 modules per car. This is only six modules. I mean, that's it's insane. If you could take, you know, two families per car off the grid, that would be astronomical because all the pricing and size differences and ease of use and plug and play, those are the, that's the uh, the cake in my opinion, but the icing really on top of the cake is the environmental aspect. I know that I don't need to get into that and the politics of that, but let, most people who know who I am understand that that's my main focus in life is trying to leave this place better than I found it. And, and trying to ensure that my daughter has clean air to breathe and water to drink. Uh, lithium ion is one of the nastiest things that we could possibly uh, harvest from this place. And we've done it so much and we just have so much of a surplus of it sitting around. There's absolutely no reason that we can't recycle it this way. There's, there, the only arguments against it are people have like, okay, customer service, Tech Direct that sells these things. I can get you the website. It's all on my page and everything. Excellent customer service. They have never taken more than 24 hours to get back to me with extremely detailed answers. Warranties, they give a 30-day uh, uh, warranty on the capacity that they tested it before they uh, shipped it. I don't know what all that covers. I don't uh, know if you can buy more warranties on it or not. But the way I look at it is it's so unbelievably cheap. Um, I have been through this process with dozens of people, and people have definitely fried battery cells or bloated them up or overcharged them, but they were only out $100 or 80 bucks because they're so ridiculously cheap. Nobody wants to take that kind of a chance when you're buying uh, a kilowatt of energy for $1,000, but when you can buy a kilowatt of energy, actually over a kilowatt of energy, for less than $200, it changes the game a little bit, and it also changes the aspect and approach towards the inefficiency between DC and AC. Like, it just doesn't matter. For another 140, 150 bucks, you can add another 1.2 kilowatts. It's just, it's that easy, it's that cheap, and it's that good for everybody involved, plus the earth. I mean, that, it's just a, it's the cake, it's the icing, and then it's icing, and then it's icing, and then it's more icing, and it's icing, and everybody's winning, and everybody's eating their cake, and everybody is getting what they want, what they need. And we're not harvesting more lithium. We're not contributing to the transportation of it and the manufacture of it and more transportation. I mean, come on. This is three kilowatts, over three kilowatts of energy that have been powering my entire life for almost a year now. 
and I realize it's just me, um, but for another $200, you could have another kilowatt and a half almost. And, you know, if you're 21st century digital people with 16 laptops and 14 tablets and whatnot, that's cool. I don't think that it would matter. Just, you know, add a couple more uh, modules on till you get to the point where you feel comfortable with the system and uh, you know what you're going to need as far as, uh, as consumption goes. Uh, I don't know that I've missed anything. I think I've rambled on for long enough here. I'm a huge fan of these modules. I'm a huge fan of how easy they are for people. If anybody wants any testimonials, I'm sure that there's several people that I've helped out or shown how to do this to that would be more than willing to give their personal testimonial on, on how that's working for them, how it did work, how easy it was, how cheap it was. Um, it's a no-brainer. Like, it really is. Like, there's no, nobody's losing, uh, you know, except for maybe Battleborn and Windy Nation because people aren't going to buy their batteries. But I don't care. <laughs> They're harvesting brand new lithium ion, lithium ions and everything that we use these days. And, and if we can find a massive, monumental way to recycle it into just something that is so incredibly, 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 whatever, uh, powerful and, and easy to use, um, I keep reiterating that over and over again. And I realize how many times I've said some of these things, but it's those points that people find too hard to believe. People don't believe me. They, uh, the only arguments that you can come up with is, is, uh, warranties. Um, and you know, if you fry one, buy another. I mean, we're talking crackers here. It's, it's just so cheap that, that you don't have to worry about burning a thousand dollars in one battery by short circuiting it accidentally you know, uh, replace it for 80 bucks or whatever. I don't, depending on how many you have. Um, there we go. There's my rant and rave about how to manually monitor and balance your Nissan Leaf modules. And I think I went a little off topic, but I covered a bunch of stuff there. <laughs> um, you can find all the links for everything on my, on this page or my, uh, Instagram that's in, in the description of most of my videos. I'll try to get into this one as well. Anyway, any other questions, something I didn't cover, something that may be specific to you or your application or your needs, ask. You know, There is no such thing as a certified off-grid solar technician. Somebody claiming that is lying to you because as far as I know, you can't even pay for that certification. You can go to classes and they'll give you a piece of paper that says, here, you know more about off-grid solar than this guy, but it doesn't give you any leg up legally. It doesn't give you any licensing to say I'm better at off-grid than this guy and until that uh, happens you know I'm just as qualified and certified as the next guy we're not talking grid tied here I understand the difference there you need years of schooling and licensing and all kinds of certifications to do that but off-grid is still very much considered a hobby this whole setup here would just be considered a hobby I could come and install it in your house and you could legally use it as power and it wouldn't matter that I didn't have a license I don't know why I'm getting into that back to the conclusion of this uh, I don't think that we got too far out what, what were we at there a little under three let's check these two that were the two farthest apart before I stop this video just for to see if they're balancing out anymore since I've been talking 774 774 and 751. If I believe the 75 came up from 750 to 751, and this other one stopped or it hasn't moved at all, right? 774 is what it was on. So, if anything, if you want to take that, that's it's balancing itself out already in the short time that I have been talking, only one one hundredth of a volt, but we're only talking three tenths of a volt, so that's how slow it's going to be. Anyway, if I miss something or confuse somebody, let me know. Thank you for watching. Damn it, I didn't keep it under 15 minutes.